So remember how I said my system might evolve? Well, here we are two days later, and guess what? It's evolving already. Uh, before I get too into this, uh, I do need to give a shout out to Cody and David, aka Vagabond Elf, on Astromech. Uh, they've really educated me on step-down converters and voltage requirements uh, on different types of devices. And I've taken what they've taught me and it's given me uh, food for thought and um, I am going to tweak some of my design. Uh, let me explain to you what I've learned and how it's going to change my approach. As I mentioned before, I'm going to be running 24 volts for the drive motors, my dome motor, and the amplifier. Uh, all of these items are similar in the respect that they take electricity and they convert it into some form of kinetic energy. Um, and for these types of devices, they usually perform best at or near their maximum voltage. Uh, so motors, for instance, uh, might spin faster or more efficiently at higher voltages than they do at lower volt voltages. Uh, amplifiers are going to be able to get louder more efficiently at higher voltage than at lower voltage. Uh, and so because of this, uh, you typically will run things at or close to their maximum voltage. Um, what I learned was that the same does not apply to electronic devices like this. They operate in a fundamentally different way. Most electronic boards, like the Arduino Mega, will operate uh, at a variety of input voltages. And in many cases, you have multiple options for how you connect that device and how you provide that voltage. For instance, you can uh, supply five volts via USB. Uh, you can supply anywhere from seven to 12 volts through the barrel connector. Uh, you can also supply seven to 12 volts via a DuPont connector. Um, so you have all these different options. Likewise, on the Maestro, uh, you can connect 5 to 16 volts uh, to the board. You can provide a separate 4.8 to 6 volts to power the servos. The MP3 trigger uh, will take anywhere from 4.5 to 12 volts via its barrel connector, or you can provide 5 volts via DuPont. So how do you go about deciding what voltage you're going to provide for all these devices? I mistakenly applied the same logic that uh, applies to these devices in designing my system. Um, I kind of saw that the Arduino, the Maestro, and the MP3 trigger could all be powered at 12 volts. And so I figured, well, that makes sense. Um, I would just apply the highest voltage to those devices. The Arduino would have to be an outlier, and it would need a separate 5 volts. Uh, so my plan was to uh, use a voltage converter to go from 24 down to 12 volts, and then probably a second one to go to uh, 5 volts for the Markduino. Uh, and uh, there's some problems with that. The problem with providing the higher voltage to these components is that unlike your motors and amplifiers, Providing more voltage doesn't really give you any tangible benefit in terms of performance. All of these boards run on 5 volts internally. They give you the convenience of being able to uh, connect at a variety of voltages, but most of these boards are going to have built-in regulators that are going to convert whatever input voltage you provide uh, down to 5 volts for it to, to operate, um, and any excess is just going to be given off as heat and wasted energy. Um, so really, when it comes to things like this, you want to try and provide the lowest voltage uh, that you can, provided that it's, it's a stable and uh, regulated voltage amount. Um, and that's where the voltage converter comes into play. This brings us to the second thing I learned a bit more about, and that's voltage regulators and how they work and how they're best used. A uh, typical step-down voltage regulator is a great way to take a variable or unregulated unre input voltage, like you get from a battery, and output a very steady, very consistent, uniform voltage, which is exactly what sensitive electronics need. Uh, they don't like voltage spikes. But that conversion comes at a bit of a cost of efficiency. Um, generally, you lose anywhere between 5 and 10% uh, in the conversion process. Because of that loss, you never really want to daisy chain multiple voltage converters. 
you really want the voltage to only be converted once along the path. Otherwise, you're just adding to your, uh, your power loss and, uh, and efficiency loss. So um, if it was a situation where I needed multiple voltages in the body, for instance, maybe I would want 12 volts and 5 volts, I would want to do separate uh, down conversions directly from the 24 volts unregulated power supply. I would not want to tack the 5 volt converter uh, off of the 12 volt converter. Having learned this about voltage regulators and about these devices made me realize that my arbitrary decision to step down from 24 to 12 volts was really kind of a wasteful uh, decision. There was no reason for me to be providing 12 volts for these devices. I should be looking for ways to provide the lowest common voltage between all of these devices, which is being driven by the Markduino. I should find a way to provide 5 volts to all of these devices. Uh, another consideration that was at the back of my mind is uh, battery life. I really want to be able to get a full day's use out of R2. I don't have an easy way to be able to change batteries. I, I would have to take the dome off and everything, and that's just illusion shattering and a deal breaker for me. So the prospect of being able to save uh, on battery capacity by optimizing the design in this case was really kind of important. So I started looking into, uh, can I provide 5 volts to all of this? And uh, the problem then started to become the Arduino Mega. According to the documentation for the Arduino, the only recommended way of providing 5 volts for the board is through the USB connection. But in this case, that wasn't going to be an option for me because I already have plans to have a USB connection running from the charge bay into the Arduino so that I can do software updates. Both the barrel connector and the V-in uh, DuPont connector both uh, recommend no less than 7 volts of, of input. Uh, and the reason for that is that both of these feed the onboard voltage regulator, which will convert any input voltage down to the 5 volts that runs the actual board. And the risk is that if you provide less than 7 volts, uh, then the output from that regulator is going to be less than the 5 volts that's needed, which is why they recommend no less than 7 volts. But then the folks at Astromech pointed out that there is this 5 volt pin, which is accessible right here. And this pin essentially represents the output of that voltage regulator. Uh, and Arduino does not recommend using that as the input voltage source. Uh, but since my uh, input voltage is going to be coming from a voltage regulator, it should be stable and uniform enough that I can reliably use that as the uh, power supply for the Arduino. So with that, I think I finally have a way that I can use 5 volts for everything in the body instead of the 12 volts. And I can save on the wasted power that uh, pushing 12 volts into all of these devices is going to cause. It also simplifies the design in that I only need to have one step-down uh, conversion in order to be able to run everything in the body. Likewise, I think for the dome, I'm going to pass the full 24 volts up uh, through the slip ring uh, into, uh, into the dome where I'm going to have a second converter that will just down convert everything to 5 volts for the Markduinos in the dome, as well as the lights and, uh, and all of the servos. So in a nutshell, yeah, that's the evolution of, uh, of this system. Uh, again, I really have to give credit to uh, Cody and David at Astromech. Um, they really helped me understand the, the fundamental differences here and being able to uh, come up with this uh, better design is exactly the kind of thing that I hope I'll have more of that I'll be able to share. So I'm going to wrap it up for this one for now. I will make a few updates uh, to my board, and um, hopefully I'll have another update for you um, sometime soon.